Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the principle of operation of a DC motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. So the DC motor is a device which convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. When the electrical energy is given, it will convert into mechanical energy. Mechanical energy means it is rotation. The motor will start rotate when the electrical energy is given. So what is the basic principle? When a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force, mechanical force, which tends to rotate the armature. Where the direction is given by Fleming's left hand rule, and the magnitude of force F equal to B I L Newton. Now we will see what is the, we need to see current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. We will see that what is current carrying conductor and what is the magnetic field. Then due to this it will experience a force that rotate the armature. What is mean by armature? The diagram available at the time we will see that. The direction is given by the Fleming's left hand rule and the magnitude is B I L magnetic flux density current and length of the conductor these three parameters will decide the force now we will see Fleming's left hand rule what is the Fleming's left hand rule so it states that sketch out the thumb middle finger and index finger of the left hand in such a way that they are right angle to each other we need to stretch out the left hand the thumb, middle and index finger so that it is right angle to each, each other. In this case, the middle finger indicates the direction of current. The index finger indicates the direction of magnetic field so that the direction of force of the conductor is given by the thumb. Right? So, these all are perpendicular to each other. Now, the diagram available so that it is easy to understand. So, this is the magnetic field indicated by four finger, the current direction, current flow indicated by middle finger, then rotation of the motion indicated by the thumb, all are perpendicular to each other. Now, we will see how the current is flowing, how the magnetic field is created, then how the motion of the conductor, what is armature, how it will rotate, we will see the detailed diagram. So, the di diagram is available here. In a DC motor, that is DC machine, actually it is called a DC machine. The same machine can be used for motor or generator. Here we are going to use this machine as a motor. So, in that there are majorly two parts available. One is stationary part and rotating part. So, this is the rotating part called a armature. It's a rotating part. These are all the electromagnet, the gold called a field winding. This is the stationary part. Field winding is the stationary part armature is the rotating part. So, what is the principle of operation when a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field? So, which, which one is current carrying conductor, which is magnetic field? So, these are all magnetic field. So, the magnetic field is created by the excitation. Excitation means the DC supply is given. When the DC supply is given, it becomes the electromagnet. The excitation may be given separately or self. There are two types available separately excited DC motor, self excited DC motor. That is the separate topic is available. So, when the excitation is given, this coil, this is a field coil, field winding, it becomes the electromagnet. So, this is the armature, rotating bar. Here, the coils are available. The input to the motor is the electrical energy. So, the energy, electrical supply is given to this armature. So, the current is start flowing through the armature conductors. Right. So, excitation is given in the stationary field that is the field winding. So, it becomes electromagnet. The current is electrical energy input to the motor electrical energy is given to the armature. So, the current is start flowing through the armature conductors. Now, this current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field, then it will start rotate. It will start rotate that is given by the Fleming's left hand rule the magnitude is B I L B I V, right. So, this is the magnetic field, this one current carrying conductor. How this magnetic field created by excitation? How the current is flowing? 
the current the input to the motor is the electrical energy so the when the supply is given the current is flowing through this armature so this current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field it will experience a force so that when the supply is given the armature will start rotate so that is given by the three parameters b i l magnetic field intensity current and length of the conductor now we'll see the description one by one the field magnets are excited by the dc source and a magnetic field is produced in the stationary stationary part field winding this given by the dc source so it become a magnetic field it produce a magnetic field the armature winding is connected to a dc supply there is a input input to the motor then the current is flowing through the conductor so now this become a current carrying conductor this become a magnetic field now we have current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field hence the conductors are experience a force the windings are connected in such a way that conductor under n pole are assumed to carry the current downwards and the these conductor under the s pole carry the current upwards so the current will be upward and downward in alternate coil so that then only we can produce the n pole and s pole alternatively in order to go for a attraction and repulsion principle right so current going downward and upward alternately so that n pole and s poles are created the direction of force on each conductor is given by Fleming's left hand rule thus the forces collectively produce a unidirectional torque which cause a rotation of the armature right the force is created in each and every coil collectively it will produce the torque so that it will start rotate the armature constructionally there is no difference between the generator and motor i already told same machine can be interchangeably used as a generator or a motor right motor means electrical energy is given as a input generator means mechanical energy is given an input electrical energy is taken as a output so function of commutator in a motor is the same same as the generator in generator it is used to collect the current here it is used to supply the current to the armature winding by reversing current in each conductor it passes from one pole to another it help to develop the continuous and unidirectional torque right so it will able to supply the current continuously to the armature winding so that it start rotating so it is used to help the develop the continuous and unidirectional torque right so this is the principle of operation one important thing is we have the back emf or counter emf for any force we have the opposing force here we have back emf due to back emf only the motor is rotating we'll see what is mean by back emf when a armature of motor rotates the conductor also rotates hence the cut the flux then emf is induced in the conductor according to the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so this is nothing but the generator principle available in the motor right this armature conductor cut the flux whenever the whenever the conductor cuts the flux emf is generated that is the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction here the armature conductors that will cut the magnetic flux so that emf is induced now we'll see the direction so this is supply voltage given the supply voltage is going downward direction but back emf is created in upward direction so both are opposite to each other right so this is the supply voltage this is the back emf so armature current so because of both the directions are opposed it is called as a back emf the direction of back emf is given by fleming's right hand rule because fleming's right hand rule is applicable for a generator here emf is induced so that it is given by fleming's right hand rule the direction of this emf is in opposition to the applied voltage that is by lenz law right now we'll see what are the advantages why we are where we are concentrating the back emf we'll see this one by one because of its opposing direction it is called as a back emf or counter emf what is the kbl equation eb plus iara minus v equal to 0 otherwise 
V equal to the applied voltage equal to converted into back EMF and armature resistant drop. V equal to EB plus IA RA. Right. So in that generated it is it is actually it is opposite. EB equal to EG generated voltage equal to V plus IA RA. Here applied voltage equal to EB plus IA RA. The voltage applied is converted into back EMF and remaining will be dropped across the armature resistance. So, this is called as the voltage equation of the motor V equal to EB plus IA RA. So, from this we can write EB equal to V minus IA RA. So, that IA RA equal to V minus E that is interchange. So, that IA equal to V minus E divided by RA the armature current is nothing but applied voltage minus back EMF divided by RA. So, from this equation back EMF oppose the applied voltage. The applied voltage will have to overcome the opposition offered by the back EMF and force the armature current into the armature current into the armature because this back EMF opposing the armature opposing the applied voltage but this applied voltage need to overcome this back EMF so that it require more current. So, it will allow the armature to flow more amount of current in the armature. So, that is given because it is opposing each other, but the applied voltage will try to rotate the motor in the same speed by getting the more current through the armature. V must be large enough to balance both the voltage drop in the armature resistant as well as the back EMF. So, already armature resistant drop is there. In addition, we have back EMF also there. So, that the voltage will reduce, but the V, v must be larger. V must be overcome to these two drops. So, the power required to overcome EB is EB into IA. So, this back EMF into IA will give us the power required to overcome. So, E B can be written as P pi N divided by 60 into Z by A. So, this is nothing but the generated EMF, EMF generated in generator. So, the same equation can be used for back EMF also or E B equal to K pi into N because all these parameters are constant only pi and N is variable. This number of poles, conductor, uh, parallel path all are constant. So, we can write like this. So, by analyzing this equation, we will come to the conclusion. So, E B depends upon the speed, back E M F depends upon the speed of the motor, right. So, both are proportional. If speed increases, the back E M F also will increase. If speed decreases, the back E M F also decreases. So, finally, what it will do? So, the B B will act as a governor. So, it makes the motor self-regulating so that it draws, it draws as much current as increasing. So, it is a act as a governor. So, E B increase means speed also increase, E B decrease means speed also decreases, right. So, due to that it is act as a governor. So, depends upon the load, how much current is required that will be drawn by the motor. So, other thing regulated by this E B, right. So, it is act as a regulator. So, it is given, it draws as much current as it is required, necessary, but which current, which amount of current is necessary that will be drawn by the motor, right. So, this back EMF will act as a important role in the motor, it is act as a regulator, it is a self regulator of a motor. So, in this video, we discuss about the principle of operation of a DC motor. The Subscribe this channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.